What's up, everybody? I'm Nick, and I'm here with T. Russell Hunter. And if you've never watched our other interview, he is from Free the States, a ministry that fights to abolish abortion, right? T. Russell, why don't you just say hello to our Correct. listeners right before we dive into this yeah. interview? Hello, everybody. It's good to be back. Good to be talking to you again. Yeah, so uh, we had some big news uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, the Dobbs report, right? Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's talking about this uh, this decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, right? Um, right? Just to get this conversation rolling, let's uh, let's open up watching this video just so we can see the two sides of emotions that are are presented to us all throughout the world. Like my country doesn't love me and appreciate my body as a woman. Complete and utter joy that it was finally overturned, but the determination, a steely determination that the battle is not over. Abortion bans are illegitimate. Forced motherhood is illegitimate. You're hearing a lot of passion right there. Let's take a live look outside the Supreme Court in D.C. right now, where a huge crowd has formed, some celebrating the court's monumental decision today, overturning Roe v. Wade. Others pretty furious about it. The justices voted 5-4 to four in striking down Roe v. Wade, stripping away constitutional protection for abortions that have been in place for nearly 50 years. And this paves the way for states to impose outright bans on the procedure. Nearly half have indicated they plan to do just that. Right now, 13 states are preparing for trigger laws to take effect. Those are laws that were ready to roll once this decision came down. The timing really... That's important, right? We have these trigger laws that were in effect before this decision were, was even made. Could you take a moment to uh, to define what a trigger law is? Why did these states even put them into play? And what does it mean once they actually become law? Yeah, so um, I live in Oklahoma, um, for those who don't know. And so I can talk about it very specifically from Oklahoma, from an Oklahoma point of view, because uh, it's one of the states where a trigger law was put forward and passed back in 2019, and it's subsequently gone into effect. Um, and I'll get into the history of that. But basically, um, pro-lifers have, over the course of the last decade or so, um, been passing these laws that basically state in the event that Roe v. Wade is overturned or repealed and the um, right, the way they see it, the right to uh, regulate or even ban abortion goes back to the states, they would go into effect. So back in 2019 in Oklahoma, there was a bill of total and immediate abolition, the Abolition of Abortion in Oklahoma Act. It was Senate Bill 13. It was uh, highly, it was very popular, like among the people, large rallies, lots of emails, lots of phone calls, lots of pressure for the Oklahoma Senate to move Senate Bill 13 through the process and get it to the governor's desk. Now, that bill would have been a bill to assert state sovereignty, abolish abortion, criminalize it within the Oklahoma borders and uh, do so in defiance of the Supreme Court. Um, it would have done so basically saying the Supreme Court opinion in Roe v. Wade, Case v. Planned Parenthood is an unconstitutional opinion and the state of Oklahoma is going to uphold the Constitution, protect every life from death, from murder, mm -hmm. um, and not follow the Supreme Court. Um, that bill uh, was in the Health and Human Services Committee and it was uh, we were going there every time that committee met to basically say, hear this bill, pass this bill. In the midst of all that work, the leader of the Senate, Greg Treat, came to the uh, committee, grabbed a bill from one of the members, modified it and put in the trigger bill, the trigger law. And essentially, he said, listen, I'm, I agree with um a lot of what Senate Bill 13, the Abolition Act, says about like repealing all the laws 
allowing abortion, regulating abortion in Oklahoma, he, he, he basically said, yes, I agree with the, uh, the abolitionist senator, but I don't agree with the defying Roe. And so he kind of put forward a bill to ban abortion from conception. Um, there are some exceptions in there for like the life of the mother, but to ban abortion from, ex from, from conception uh, in the event that the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. So that was 2019. Then he had 2000, the rest of the 2019, 2020, 21, and 22. And so babies have been murdered since that trigger bill was passed mm. instead of the abolition bill. But um, here, when the Dobbs decision was um, handed down, uh, that gave the senators and the governor and the district attorney and everyone in Oklahoma, um, you know, in their mind, permission to now ban abortion in the state. So that's how trigger laws work. Um, there's there's a few things that are a, a little bit you know missing from them that we can talk about, but that's generally how it works. Not all not all trigger laws in all states are the same. Some of them are not total bans, but they're triggers for regulations and that sort of thing. Gotcha. So if if just to dumb it down, yeah. these states knew that this decision from the Supreme Court was coming, threw a law in and said, if yeah. this happens, we will ban abortion, right? Or criminalize yeah. it. How do, what, what's the, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, it wasn't criminalized. So I don't know if they always knew, like in the state of Oklahoma, the trigger law was passed because we were saying abolish abortion and they were trying to save face. So they didn't want to they didn't want to stand up against the Supreme Court as the state of Oklahoma mm -hmm. and sort of force the issue um, that would have sent it to the Supreme Court more quickly um, if they had done that. But they didn't want to do that. And so um, I don't know if when they passed it, they thought this is really going to happen or not. So I think sometimes people pass trigger laws because they think it's going to happen. Other times they're just passing it so they can look like they're doing something. Uh, so, it. but in this event, um, you know, some, some, some people would say, Hey, you know, without the abolitionist pressing for total abolition, you wouldn't have even got the trigger bills um, because the trigger bills were passed to save face. And so now that, that Roe was overturned, you had an immediate trigger bill mm -hmm. because of the abolitionist. Um, and that's true in a certain sense. Um, not that we're like taking credit. It's not our bill, you know, that we didn't have a trigger bill. But um, it is true that the reason that we don't have to wait for the next legislate, legislative session is because they already passed that thing to save face. But I don't think, I think sometimes people passed it in some states, you know, you see the graphic, you know, 10 to 13 states. Um, I think some of these were passed just to like to front. Um, they weren't, they don't really yeah. expect the way to ever be overturned. Um, yeah. But it was of more course, of a political stunt. Yeah. And, 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 it. and Roe v. Wade can be overturned now um, in a certain sense. Uh, it's, it's easier even from the other side, Roe v. Wade. Can be, it's because now we have abortion pills being mailed out to every yeah. state. And so, like, there are no tri there were no trigger laws that were like in the event that Roe v. Wade's overturned, abortion, the act itself, by any means, at any place, whether you're talking about a pill or a surgical procedure at a freestanding clinic, abortion, the act itself is is criminalized. No state had that. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so whenever they 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 triggered them, it wasn't triggering abolition or triggering uh criminalization it was triggering some kind of ban on like abortion doctors or something like that got it got it but either way i mean christians all over the world are jumping up for joy everyone's so happy we're yeah. celebrating as if we had the biggest win on the planet and in comparison to the the left wins throughout all these years you know you you had uh 
the LGBT uh, weddings now are able to go and they can yeah. go and get married. You know, they had a win a couple years ago. Uh, they're mm -hmm. constantly getting wins left and right. And this seems like the first big conservative win, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. in the last, what, 10 years, maybe, <laughs> you know, yeah, I guess so. Right. I mean, every other news that I've heard has been a win for the left. Um, or, yeah, you it's, know, it's you have shock. gender ideologies that are now being pushed in curriculum in schools. And that has become law in, in New Jersey, where uh, my children now go into public school are being yeah. literally presented with gender ideology education. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you feel like being today? You know, you, what are you? Let's go write it on the board. You know, yeah. so it seems like this is the first conservative push um, and conservative win, so to speak, that that has really reached all over the world, the, this news. Yeah. However, you guys on uh, Free the State have a slightly different interpretation about what's going on and mm. you would think that you guys would be celebrating because your name is free the states <laughs> the states right. are now free to choose yeah. however on your podcast you guys had about an hour and a half sit down about this whole thing um mm -hmm. and one uh one segment really stuck out to me i'm gonna play it and then we can discuss it real quick okay um but basically you guys were talking how this is not the greatest news in the world. This is actually not the hugest one in the world. Yeah. And we're going to see why in a moment. Uh, just as a, an additional point here, if you're, if you're watching this and you're still thinking, well, I don't, don't, I still don't get this. I don't get why you guys aren't just clapping. Like, why aren't you celebrating? Why are you all happy right now? Uh, I find a lot of <laughs> slow, slow clap. I find I analogies really helpful. And one analogy here would be imagine that you're living in a culture that says rape is legal and you can do it at any time whenever you want. Uh, and you are saying the entire time you're just a, a dissident in that culture and you're saying no, we don't think that this should happen. We think that it should be abolished on every level. This should not be allowed. States should defy the Supreme Court that protects this. Uh, the Supreme Court should rule constitutionally that rape is not legal. This is an abomination before God and woe to this culture. That's what you're saying. And there's another group of people that are saying this is an issue that needs to go back to the courts. The Supreme Court should rule that this is something that uh, that needs to go back to the states. The Supreme Court should rule that the states have a right to regulate when and where and how rape happens or to abolish rape entirely if they want to but really our solution is to just get rid of the houses where these abducted women are and uh we would like you to be able to rape somebody in the comfort of your yeah. own home or something like that but we don't think you should be criminalized and for we it. want immunity yeah. for a rapist and we want immunity for rapists yeah. you would not be happy right now you would not be celebrating the ruling that said, yes, it can go back to the states. You'd be saying this was a evil thing. This did not go far enough. Yeah. And I think that the reason that this is something that can now be celebrated is because we've lived 50 years in a culture that kills babies and humanizes babies and does not treat them as our neighbors, as our equals, as people yeah. that we love <laughs> as we love ourselves. And now we're celebrating. Yeah, we've been trained up in that. Yeah, we've been trained to be very ageist in the way that we view them. And as soon as we see, we swap it out with some other sin, with people that we do view as equals, we, people that we view as ourselves, we immediately see this is not something that I would celebrate. Yeah. I think that this is this would be something that I would I would denounce. I would say no, they didn't go far enough. This is not the right thing. We should not be celebrating. We should not be happy. I am going to continue my same posture of being dissatisfied because my culture allows for the dehumanization and murder yeah. or rape of my neighbors. Mm, yeah. That is the attitude we would have. I think that's an amazing yeah. point. Yeah, and it's. Um, Clear. It's a, it's an amazing point. It's clearly strong and right. Uh, yeah. And it's I've only heard it really one place. And I've watched hours and hours and hours of people talking about this. But like that point, that perspective, um, that kind of expressed dissatisfaction, like rightly seeing it. Um, yeah. Not to toot our own horn, but, um, you know, we were. We we've never been we've never been calling for 
the repeal of Roe v. Wade or for states to have the right to legalize abortion. We've always been calling for uh, the criminalization of abortion everywhere, abolition, and, um, yeah. you know, in saying the states are not free to obey the Constitution. Um, yeah. and, and so when the Dobbs decision came out, the Dobbs decision was saying, hey, states are free to have child sacrifice or not. And so for the for the abolitionist, the perspective there was like, why would I celebrate this? It's not like I'm a pro-choicer, you know, mm -hmm. and this is just the states are allowed to choose. But I, th I think we didn't say it in that clip, but I think that pro-lifers and kind of like what you were saying a second ago, they're so used to not winning um, that that whenever a win comes out, whenever something that's like their like their golden calf, you know, like repealing Roe v. Wade, this is the thing they're most focused on when it gets repealed. It doesn't dawn on them. Well, wait, what's the implication of how it was repealed? It was repealed by saying that, you know, California can choose to murder babies. New yeah. Jersey can choose to murder babies. Like a majority of the states in the United States of America, the day after this, were murdering babies. Yeah. By the way, I want to say something. You yeah. realize with abortion, um, they have this group of argumentation that they use often, but mm -hmm. it can only be used for abortion. If you apply that to any other evil or any other uh, bad, it doesn't yeah. work like what we did with rape. All right. Now the states can can free up and, and say, uh, do you want rape to be legal? Do you not want to rape to be legal? Yeah. Yay. N yeah. No. You apply that. Apply that mentality to any other thing, yeah. any other horrific thing. And, and people are not going to agree with you. But yeah. somehow because the woman... Or, or even some men if that, that advocate for this are saying your choice for your body is more important than the baby's life. But if you were to rape those same women, they wouldn't agree with you. Yeah, They would totally be opposed to that movement. So it's like my thing is with your thinking, with any defense, with any type of argumentation, if you can be consistent, if you can see it all the way through, if you could apply that thing to almost anything else, then mm -hmm. it's a solid argument. But yeah. if you are just going to selectively say my argumentation only works for abortion, but it doesn't work for anything else, the argumentation falls apart by itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you can do this with all sorts of other evils. So you can think about other evils. And uh, when that happened, when the Supreme Court thing came down, and I wasn't sort of jumping for joy, and I'm sure some people like Facebook friends are like, why aren't you? Yeah, this is like your thing. And and I was actually reminded of uh, an abolitionist from the past, um, Harriet Tubman. Yeah, Har Harriet Tubman. <laughs> um, the 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 day or so after the Emancipation Proclamation came out. So uh, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all the slaves in the South, you know, as a war measure. But it wasn't abolition. It wasn't what any of the abolitionists were calling for. It was a sort of, you know, it may have, it was like good and it signaled like that he had really wanted to take a, a move against slavery. But mm -hmm. um, a lady that was working with Harriet Tubman asked her, you know, so what do you think about this? And that's where she said her famous, well, never wound a snake, kill it quote, because she said, well, what Lincoln has done is instead of killing this snake, he's just wounded it. And if yeah. you just wound the snake, it's just gonna jump back up and bite you again. And so she said, he has to, he has to abolish it, which is what he, Lincoln himself knew that. He knew that after the war, he had to get that cabinet together and he had to, he had to really push for the 13th amendment. So mm -hmm. the, the reason I thought about that was, is that the disposition of an abolitionist, whenever a half measure is put forward is going to be to to de, to immediately demand more and to mm -hmm. demand consistency um because if we just go hey that's great we won and kind of go home and and don't pay attention to the fact that oh wait the way we won was not um not just um, not really a win 
It wasn't. Yeah, it, it's not like it, it was really just, a win. It wasn't even really like some people like to look at things as like steps in the right direction. Like, was it a step in the right direction or not? Well, it's like if the goal is um, establishing equal justice and equal protection for preborn babies, if that's the goal, mm -hmm. it wasn't even a step in that direction because there's nothing in the Dobbs decision that says preborn babies deserve the right to life and should be protected by law the same way that born people are. There's nothing in there that says that. It actually says this will go back to the states and we, the Supreme Court justices, are not weighing in on what the preborn human being is and should be treated like or anything like that. They weren't. Yeah. They, they literally did not weigh in on the constitutionality of murdering babies in the womb. They just said, send it back to the states. So they were just yeah. like, so it was it wasn't like it wasn't like a step towards justice. It was a different thing. And because it was a different thing, you have to look at it and you have to say, what was it? Well, it was continued judicial supremacy. It was continued choice. It was continued mm -hmm. legal abortion. Like mm -hmm. the fact that re you repeal Roe v. Wade and that does not criminalize abortion. It tells you that your goal of repealing Roe v. Wade wasn't right. Your goal should have been abolishing abortion. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I think I love that you brought up slavery because let's for a moment imagine uh, how crazy people would react if slavery was up to the states. That, oh, yeah. Can, like the same argumentation, yeah. right? Can you imagine the families that don't have slaves? How are they going to work? How are they going to get food? How are they? And, and they do that with abortion. Imagine the yeah. unwanted babies. You're not going to be able to feed them. You're not going to be oh, able yeah. to clothe them. You're going to have a whole lot of unwanted babies. Apply that same mm -hmm. logic to slavery. Yeah, it they, doesn't well, no, work. they did do that. They can you imagine like, the can you imagine the people that say, yay, slavery's up to the states? Like would Christians yeah. or people in general be rejoicing if this news came out, slavery's up to the states? Well, here's the here's the sad, ironic thing from history is that that did happen. Yeah, right. And, um, you know, so they began abolishing slavery in the northern states and they left it legal in the southern states and they mm -hmm. protected it constitutionally. And of course, abolitionists in the North and in the South, abolitionists were calling for not just the abolition of slavery in their state, like in their cities, but in other people's states. And that's what enraged the country so much. And there were Christians in the North that looked at the abolitionist and said, hey, why can't you be happy? We don't yeah. have slavery here. Like there's no yeah. slavery in Boston. It, don't be mad that there's slavery in Maryland. And so it's kind of like that. That does seem crazy. You kind of like if the Supreme Court ruled today, like it's up to every state to decide whether they have chattel slavery or not. We're like, oh, that's. Well, that was that did happen. And yeah. there were people who were ce celebrating it. But then there are people like us. Who were, who were not, who were discontent with that. Yeah, I think it's important to say, though, in, in a world that essentially hates God, this is definitely good news. Um, this is definitely moving in the right direction, so to speak, when we can protect potentially millions of babies. Um, and millions of yeah. people will have the opportunity to live as opposed to die immediately before they even are born. You know, um, However, it's, it's also important mm -hmm. to say that the fight is not over. We need to continue to fight against abortion, even in these left wing states. Right. We need to continue to fight for a complete abolitionism and, and just abolish it altogether. The same way we would fight to end slavery, the same way we would fight to end murder, the same way we would fight to any other horrific example we can come up with. But somehow people are angry at us for fighting for life, but they wouldn't be angry at us. For fighting for any other thing that we can think of so i mean yeah. and i think it's because emotions are truly like they're, they're harped on that like these women lives are affected forever you know it's not just this momentary thing or, or this thing that they're suffering through in a season and it's over no this is 
full-on dedication for the rest of their lives, they are being forced to raise a baby they don't want. And they are being yeah. forced to go through nine months of intense labor and pain and suffering. And, and I can understand that emotion for a second. But, mm -hmm. but, but let's ask the hard question. So let's say yeah. I, I, I'm actually forbid. smiling when you said that. I, I had to say because I'm smiling when you said that because my wife is currently pregnant, and she's been pregnant six times. And uh, this yeah. one, she's almost forty, and she's like, I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> and she, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. just kind of like, well, you, uh, you know, it, it, as long as you're pregnant, yeah, you have to do it again. <laughs> but if yeah, you're not yeah, pregnant, exactly. you don't have to do it again. So. I'm sorry, I'm smiling, and, and like, I get it. It's not. It's is, not easy. It's hard. Yeah. Even for even for good Christian ladies who love babies, it is hard. It is nine months. It is, uh, you know, sickness, and you know, it, it is what it is. But it's also a child. There's joy. So anyway, yeah. go go back to your, your but, but question. But also, you know, I, I can go on a uh, I can go on a long rant about this, but mm -hmm. but the pain and suffering that you're enduring is real woman if you're listening we hear you we love you and we understand what you're going through is real however as opposed to instead of looking at that pain and suffering as something that you're dreading allow that pain and suffering to point you to the ultimate solution to all the evil and that's jesus christ the reason why you're experiencing pain and suffering is because we live in a broken world and because sin has cursed it all around. And yeah. we have to unfortunately endure all this pain and suffering. But instead of saying, woe is me, woe is me, look to the cross and let it remind you of how bad you need Jesus. Go to Jesus and while you're raising that baby, you're going to enjoy it because you know that life is God ordained. And you know that Jesus Christ is your savior. And not only will you enjoy this life, you're also going to enjoy the next one as well. So I yeah. think the Christian mentality is the only way to win through this. Um, yeah. In reality, the Christian mentality is the only way to look. It's the only amazing worldview because it gives you answers to all these things. But you're a Christian and, and this is the answer that I wanted to, this is the question that I wanted to ask. You're a Christian yeah. and you have the Christian worldview. You understand the importance of, of Jesus Christ. You understand the importance of the gospel and living out in evangelism. But that doesn't mean that everything in your life is perfect and easygoing and, and, and you're not rich, right? I don't think you are. You're, you're, like we don't have this, this false gospel that promises us things that yeah. we will never get. We might not ever get. Yeah, my best life, life is now hard. Is yeah, yeah, life is hard. We don't name it and claim it. We don't look to God for money. We look to God for salvation and a relationship with him and love with our eternal father. But yeah. things are hard, right? So God forbid, and I ask this with all respect for you and your family, but God forbid mm -hmm. someone came and, and raped your wife and she became pregnant. Without a shadow of a doubt, there is no doubt in your brain not even a slight little doubt that you're going to take that baby and raise it as your own instantly? Yeah, I mean, there isn't, not for me and for my wife, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Maybe there would be, but there isn't right now whenever you ask me that question because my wife and I have talked about this. Uh -huh. um, we've already sat down and, you know, because we're so active in the abolitionist cause, you know, we, we've talked about just like what, what is in our heart and in our mind in that instance. And so it's, you know, it's the, uh, it's the poster or it's the drop card or the, the meme or whatever. Like we don't punish children to death for the crimes of their fathers. Like that's yeah. easy to say when you're arguing about it, like on Facebook or whatever, but you're like, okay, but yeah, wh what if it was your wife or your daughter exactly. or something like yeah. that? Um, it's kind of like, well, it, that's where all of a sudden your theological beliefs get real tested it's like well i i do fully believe that it's wrong to punish children for the crimes of their 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 parents um mm -hmm. i also fully believe that it never helps a rape victim it never helps the mother to murder the child it doesn't unrape her it doesn't make it yeah. go away 
Yeah. So, so, so there is that now to be really, you know, just to kind of grab it fully by the horns say, well, yeah, it doesn't make it go away, but she wouldn't have to carry the child conceived in rape for nine months. I say, this is, I mean, that is evil that is done have has been done to her and that she's going to have to experience and so on and so forth. So what yeah. is the answer there? Well, again, murder is not the answer there surrounding her with love, compassion, you know, like our, our church, the people that we're in community with that, that would be the answer and, you know, loving this child and, you know, basically, you know, looking to God for, you know, all the help that we would need to do that. It's not just like, it's like, look to Christ who suffered unjustly yeah. for us and, you know, rely on him. And so there isn't a shadow of a doubt. It would be hard. It'd be very difficult. It'd be, you know, sad, but we're already there. Like there would be no anger or malice towards the baby. And the other, the last thing, theological, mm. I mean, this is the Bible dingers, right? So theologically uh, speaking, and a lot of people don't say this because, you know, they'll get sound, sound bited and, uh, quote out of context, but yeah, scriptures are pretty darn clear, um, that it is God who knits the baby together in the womb. Like that there's a sort of like the sovereignty of God, like he is the one knitting the child together in the womb. And that mm -hmm. baby is like, he opens the womb. He like, he decides, you know, so wherever you fall on the whole sovereignty of God thing, this is pretty clear in the scripture that if there's a baby that's being, de that's developing in a mother's womb, regardless of how they got there, God's doing it. So, theologically to to murder that child for our own so that so that we can sort of deal incorrectly with this evil thing that's been done to us done to her um would be to be going against something god's doing yeah um which is really hard to say but whenever you look at it on the flip side and you say well wait that's so harsh like why would god do that well, as someone who knows children that have been conceived in rape mm -hmm. and knows how they've been a blessing and how they're loved and how they're awesome and important and they're co-equal image bearers and my neighbors and they brought redemption into a situation instead of destruction, like this sort of like way our culture is just like child conceived of rape, kill them. They're rape spawn. Mm -hmm. Kill them. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's completely completely like people say they're being compassionate on the mother and they're not they're not even, they're not thinking about it very deeply and they're not looking at the real fact of the matter is, is there's all sorts of people out there who have raised children conceived in rape and it's that raising of that child which brought them healing you know and yeah, um, yeah. And then and then you meet people. I meet people on college campuses, whether they're telling me the truth or not. But they'll say they got an abortion and it was because of rape. And I don't know if they're telling me the truth or not, but they're so hardened and they're like, I needed to do that. I'm like, why did you punish the child, you know, and try to reason with them? But um, yeah, like a mother uh, bringing to term a child who is truly fatherless. And then like mm -hmm. me, the father adopting that child, loving the baby, loving my wife. I mean, promoting redemption over destruction is just foreign to our culture. And so it's just like, everyone is just so prone to like do the easy thing, take care of themselves. Uh, you know, don't want to be pregnant for nine months, kill a baby. Um, but if yeah. we were right, if we were right minded, we'd be like, protect that baby and kill the rapist, you know? Yeah, exactly. How 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 opposite of a mentality is it that we would kill an innocent child and not the rapist? So yeah. we would see that argumentation all the way through. Like I said, consistency is key. And sometimes the rapist saying, gets off because exactly we murdered the baby. Yeah. And. and I mean, no one's going to say, let's kill the rapist. 
Yeah. And somehow they oh, yeah. kill the innocent baby that didn't do anything wrong. You start no saying kill the rapist, the same people who are for abortion will be calling you evil. Yes. Yes. Like I said, I think one thing that I really would love to drive home is consistency is key. There's so many Christians that are like borderline saying, oh, you know, it's complicated. Or I can't be anti this or anti that. I'm not. This is the best one yet. I'm not pro-abortion. I'm pro-choice. Because every woman has a choice to do. You don't know their situation. I'm like, name a situation. Give me any situation you want. I have an answer for it. Give me any one you want. Uh, and, And that is dangerous. I think it's. There's some theological things that we can openly discuss and maybe have multiple opinions about. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like Mark and I were talking before with this thing started, like dispensationalism or covenant theology or eschatology Mm -hmm. or whatever. You can have many different interpretations and hermeneutics for that. But it's clear. It's black and white. It can't be any clearer that murder is wrong regardless of scenario. Like throw at me whatever scenario you want. And regardless of those scenarios, it's still murder. You're yeah. still God never literally. Yeah. No, I was just say like whenever whenever murders listed like thou shalt not murder, except for like you know, if you can't afford the baby. Yeah, if you're poor. Except if you were raped, you know. Yeah. Except if anything, there's so many of these yeah. crazy and usually the, defenses. And, and usually the people who are like arguing that abortion has to remain legal for rape and incest. Or severe fetal abnormality and all life of the mother. Usually, the people who are arguing from the exceptions, if you'll just ask them, wait, do you think that it should only be legal for those exceptions? Just to just to know, really quick, they'll be like, no, it should be legal for any reason whatsoever. And it's like, how sick? The whole argumentation falls apart. Yeah, they're they're wicked. Like people, yeah, people are out there like using someone's awful situation that's happened to them. Like somebody's got a baby that's like deformed and like yeah. they're facing like forty thousand dollars of immediate hospital bills the <laughs> yeah. day of birth and they're using that and they're like i just got an abortion because i wanted to go out next friday night it's exactly. like oh, you, you believe in just murder for anything and they will admit it a lot of them like i'm seeing people losing their minds over this roe v wade thing but there are people who are like I live in a state where abortion is legal, so I'm going to go get pregnant so I can get an abortion, so I can exercise. And you're just like, what okay, logic so it's is not, that? It's just, yeah, and it's obviously not just for rape. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I mean, I know this statistic was given a long time ago. I think it's 2007 or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of the rapes go unreported. But from what yeah. we know, a, a very small, less than 1%. Uh, right. abortions are due to rape. Yeah. Um, and and even if we year... increase it to 1%, it's thousands, it, it could be thousands of women, but mm-hmm. in the reality, there are millions and millions and millions of women that just yeah. get abortion without being raped for no reason at all. You know, yeah. somebody really close to me, um, I'm not going to name her, but mm-hmm. one of her great friends, her roommate in college got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And this individual is 21 years old. And the first thing that came out, she's sitting in my home. She knows I'm a Christian. She knows how I feel. She's, and she's a Christian too, but she's young. You know, she's a Christian. She's, she's growing. She's trying to figure it out. Um, But she claims Christ at least, you know, she's not yet matured in her thinking. But this individual was not a Christian. The roommate Mm -hmm. was not a Christian. And the roommate texts her and says, I'm pregnant. You should have saw the look on this uh, girl's face. Like, white as a ghost, she cared for her friend, and immediately she goes, she has to get an abortion. What? Why? Oh, she has the rest of college. She has to graduate. Her whole life's going to be over. She's never going to be able to get a career. She's never going to be able to achieve her dreams. I'm like, do you understand what a blessing a child is? Regardless of the age that you give birth You know, like I wasn't ready for my kids. And I don't know if you could speak to this, but I wasn't ready. I was broke. I was traveling three hours one way to go to work, making like 19 bucks an hour. And and you know what? 
In all reality, in New York City or New Jersey, 19 bucks an hour can't even get you anything. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I was, no, I'm still I was broke. struggling. Yeah. I was struggling yeah. to stay afloat, and uh, I could barely afford rent, and there wasn't even a little piece of me that said, you know what? I think I'm going to cop out and get an abortion. Yeah. And oh, guess man. what? God provided. God provided as we move forward. I got a better job and stuff like that. But, like, you know, like... People have such a little faith in the God who made them exist. Like yeah. with his voice, he called you into being. And yet you think he's not going to sustain you when you're faithful. And that's oh, yeah. not name it and claim it. That's yeah. just we're, living. We're, we're in, living in know. America. We're like living in America. It's like land of the plenty. Like even the poor yeah. people here are like rich. And it's kind of like usually, which I'm not saying there aren't poor people, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to abortion mills and minister out there. Mm -hmm. you, you're seeing Jaguars, BMWs, yeah. Lexus. Yeah. I mean, you see, you see big forerunners, all that kind of stuff on a regular basis. And like sometimes they will tell you their, they'll like they'll they'll tell you things like, "I'm I'm we have four kids, and this we can't afford a fifth or something." They'll say something like that. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, well. Like I'll, I'll honestly just be like, well, why don't you murder the oldest one? I'm sure they're the most expensive. <laughs> you know? it, I mean, if it, exactly because they're just lying. What it is is like we're just selfish. It's like some somebody who's got like six different streaming services on their computer gets an abortion because they yeah. don't want to cancel Netflix or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mm -hmm. we just we, and and we also live in a culture whether you agree with it or not that there's basically governmental help for, for exactly. any, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just an excuse. People, people are murderous in their hearts and uh, our culture is just a culture of death. And so it just yeah. pushes that and it presses that. And so it's not at all surprising that, you know, your friend that would just pop up as the answer. And that's sad. I mean, that's like a, that speaks a bit, to like the state of the church and being salt and light because exactly the, the thing whenever you have a a baby out of wedlock or an unplugged pregnancy shouldn't be like oh go to planned parenthood it should be i need i need to go to talk to the church you know like yes the, i know the church is here to help like the people of god love orphans and widows it's like that's an abandoned woman and a and a yeah. child without help you know so that should be what the church does yeah this guy reported me on facebook just yesterday because his point was that we are the cause of many unwanted children and he reported me instead of giving me a solid answer because obviously i didn't mean this it was a question mm -hmm. to prove a point i said you're unwanted here can i just go ahead and kill you oh yeah i've like yeah. i obviously did not mean that but yeah if you if if you were to use the same argumentation for every single scenario like that one, it's it's obviously a conservative Facebook page, a conservative Facebook yeah. group. You're unwanted there. Can someone just go and kill you? It was a point, right? Yeah. Oh just yeah. Because but, but, they're unwanted but, but, doesn't mean that they should be murdered. <laughs> yeah. I, my Twitter got dinged. I haven't been on Twitter very much. It was the first time I've ever got dinged, but I, I, I got, they'd sent me a thing and said, Hey, we're taking this down. This is violates thing. And it was the same deal that you did. I, someone was saying something like about how we need abortion because blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, you know, like, like because of poor people, I'm like, Oh, was, we should just kill poor people. Yeah. You know, just like, I'm trying to tell you what you're saying is really evil. Yeah. And, and Twitter, instead of giving you a solid response, Instead of saying, you know, I hear what you're saying. Let me give you an answer. They start screaming at you. Yeah, they get this guy super said he angry. To kill me. Yeah, yeah, and they report you. Why? Because yep. it's easier to do that than it is to give a solid answer and stay consistent with their with their worldview. You know, you, you just can't. Like, what is yeah. a woman? They can't tell you. You know, it's all about what being consistent with your worldview. Um, anyway. This was a fun conversation, and I keep I could keep talking to you for hours and hours, and we will certainly yep. keep building our relationship through the years. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this and yeah, uh, shedding some light on the situation. Yeah, well, I hope your uh, I hope your viewers are thinking through all this stuff and really just being very uh, bold 
and open. Um, you know, we we believe the gospel. We believe we've been redeemed and changed and saved. And uh, we're not left here to be silent. Um, we're not left here just to sort of, you know, blend in with the darkness. We're we mm -hmm. need to be bright. We need to we need to push back on the the darkness. Yeah. We need to shine it. And so, um, you know, just encourage everybody think through these things. You know, get resources, watch podcasts, do all the thinking and praying and preparing, and uh, you know, put on put on the t shirt and get out there and, you know be in somebody's way and you know that we're you're walking around people all over the place who uh you know think that abortion's been abolished and of course it yeah. really hasn't um but uh they're very angry right now and i think that we should while they're angry um you know be proclaiming the gospel uh very boldly yes. and very clearly very unashamedly so just encourage everybody to do that Yes, Mark and I was just talking about that, how it's so important to be bold during this time and speak out. Um, but if we speak out without presenting the gospel, we're being arrogant. But if we speak out and we, we proclaim the truth of God in the light of Christ and say, you know what, if you did these things, if you actually had an abortion, if you said a curse word, if you did something wrong in your life, whatever the case may be, there's a, there's redemption at the cross, right? Call right. upon the name of the Lord to be saved. We're not condemning you. We're not condemning you. We're not saying you're going to be in hell forever if you had an abortion. We're not saying that. What we're saying is abortion is wrong. Abortion is murder. We're yeah. trying to prevent you from doing it again. And we want you to repent for what you did. Come to Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved and, yeah. and live forever in the truth of the gospel. Um, and right. I think that to, to wrap that up, you know, to wrap up this interview, I think that's what I want everyone to take home today. Yeah. Uh, we we both Russell and I both will agree we're standing against abortion because it's a horrific thing to do and it's murder. But we're also standing against it because God would stand against it. But we're also standing by your side, calling you to Christ and calling you to repentance. And, and we're not condemning you. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But God himself calls us against evil. He calls us against doing the things that he hates. So we're not being judgmental for saying, don't do these things. We're right. actually being super loving because we love you and we want you to live in, in the truth of the gospel and we want you to live in good relationship with God. Yeah, we, so, call, we call abortion murder because uh, it is murder. And we're also not afraid to say it because we know a God who forgives murderers. You know, exactly. Such were many of us. So all yeah. of us are sinners and, uh, you know, even with the specific sin of abortion, heaven is filled with people who murder their children and exactly Christ died for them, too. Um, now, hell is filled with people who murder their children as well because they reject <laughs> Christ. But yes. that's that's the whole that's the defining exactly. deal there is like whether it's at whether it's been washed clean or whether it, you uh, kind of hold on to it and say my abortion was good or my sin is good no I'll lay that down we can't do that and that's the point of coming to christ we put those things aside and even though we're not perfect we continue to attempt through the holy spirit to walk in holiness and please the lord that doesn't guarantee perfection but we can't continue to have abortions because we just want to that's just not the way it works yeah should, should we continue lord. sinning so grace can abound no so anyway russ uh this has been a pleasure i hope to speak to you again and uh, yeah. we'll definitely right. do this again, man. All right, brother. Anytime.